Hello. Yesterday on the 10th of September, 2023, I interviewed Grace Merchandani, uh, an award-winning genre hopping author. I love the phrase genre hopping. I love that about her um, as a writer. Uh, she's all over the map as a writer. She has young adult books. She has uh, supernatural books, paranormal, women's fiction. Um, she does not stay in any particular lane. She writes what she wants to write. Um, and she is passionate and curious and open-minded and energetic. And without further ado, I'm going to give you Grace Merchandani. I, I don't want to risk butchering your name, so uh, why don't I, uh, I'll just let you introduce yourself. <laughs> sure, my name is Grace Merchandani. Merchandani, okay, great, okay. Um, so my name is Ashley Rovira, and I um, I know um, I kind of contacted you sort of out of the blue, and so <laughs> I guess it's like, a, it, it would be fair, I think, to tell you a little bit about myself and what my objective is. I'm, I work as a librarian. Um, I work, uh, I, I live in Louisiana, although I go to school online in North Carolina and uh, I'm, I'm getting my master in uh, library and information uh, science. And I read all the time. It basically, um, I, I came across you because I was reading a Kendall Bella story called Audrey and Maud. And, uh, it, um, it, it sucked me in immediately. It, it honestly, it made me think of um, a movie that I really love, uh, A League of Their Own. So I don't know if you, you want to talk about that. Um, kind of funny. But, um, but then when I contacted you and we started kind of messaging back and forth, um, you told me that your favorite is actually <laughs> touch me, see me, feel me, hear me. Hear me. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Thank you. Yeah, the paperback. Yeah. And I, I have the ebook. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. And I'm almost finished. I'm so close, which I think it's opportune. I think it's good that I'm not quite finished because I, I won't risk uh, giving away any spoilers. Both of these stories, although they're so different, and I, I love I love the way you described yourself. I noticed you yeah uh, somebody asked you on TikTok what kind of books you write, and you said I'm a genre hopper. I love that. I am, yes, absolutely. I can I cannot stay with one genre yeah. because I think writing really um kind of digs at that quality I have of um, wanting to stay very active in my mind and wanting to find new and interesting things all the time. So I'll write horror one day and historical fiction the next it just keeps me keeps me on my toes and it keeps me interested which I think is really important yeah um I I love uh touch me see me uh feel me hear me and I, I want to talk about that in depth um I think this one as well as Audrey and Maud I, I noticed um not only is it written in first person but it's in the present tense yes and that's so fascinating because I mean it not only does it take you into the into the mind of the first person character, but it's like happening right there. It's like it really it's is like a driving. Yes. And yeah. and I think that one of my biggest inspirations is actually my love of movies. Um mm -hmm. so while I'm writing, I, I play a movie in my head. So writing in first person present um is kind of a challenge that I, I absolutely love. Um because it just keeps me propelling forward. Um, yeah. and I hope it does the same to the reader. <laughs> It does. It does. It, it like touch me, see me, feel me, hear me. It's totally like watching a movie. And, and I love that. Thank yeah, you. It's it's it, it really is a I know it's a it sounds like a cliche, but it really is a page turner. Um, I just, you know, keep I've got it on my iPad and I just. <laughs> I love that. Thank you. <laughs> it, it's interesting how the YA genre it never it like I, I feel like as a reader I never outgrow that genre because 
it's always you could always connect with those are glory years right like yeah. so it's a way to like reconnect yeah. your glory years for sure yeah that's why I like writing in it yeah because yeah. I, I feel like that's a time in your life when you're just you're free to kind of travel throughout the lanes and figure out where you want to be and when you're reading to be able to travel in those lanes it feels natural to us because we've already been through it um and it's a way to experience maybe what another lane might have been like so i find it easy easy to write in the um in the young adult genres they're they're more fun you know there, there's like a freeness there that doesn't come with like something like historical fiction, which is more emotional and more, or just more uh, mature in, in its uh, process for me, so. Well, I noticed that um, Audrey and Maude, I was, I was thinking of that one, like how there's the grandmother, the mother and the, and the daughter and the mother, unfortunately is kind of more of a passive character, but you've got that interplay. So far. Yeah, but the grandmother is really, you know, you realize as you're reading, as you're, uh, as you're reading, you, you, you kind of realize that the grandmother really in the mind, you know, she never, she never outgrows that either. I mean, she's still that, you know, Why, that vital, um, like you never feel as old as you are, you know, so she's still yes. very much vital and very much active in her own life. So this idea of you being a genre hopper, how did this happen? <laughs> um, ADD, no, all joking aside, I just, um, one thing that's been true about me since I was maybe five years old is I'm always dipping into new things, you know, I, I was a winemaker, I was a singer, I was a, um, a jewelry maker, I was a, I mean, I still am all of these things, right? Um, but with writing, it, I finally found home for me. I, it's, it feels like it's what I was always meant to do. And <clears throat> I still like to change up what I'm doing, right? So I don't like to be stuck in this idea that, that Grace is only a, a middle grade supernatural fiction writer or Grace is only a, you know, a YA supernatural horror writer because I'm so many more things than that and I, I feel like I have a lot of different stories to tell and and you know that the modern thinking is no you must stay in your lane if you want to market properly you need to be known as you know one particular genre writer um, so that people that read in that genre will read your backlog and you know what I don't care I just want people to read my stories so so I end up with you know little hell on the prairie which is a horror and I end up with, you know, Mitzi Clark series, which is middle grade, but it seems like the adults love it more than the kids. And then I have my first book, which was uh, Searching for Sadie, which is um, off the grid Alaska women's contemporary romance. So, I mean, I'm working on a sci-fi. I'm working on a, a monster book. I have a, a PNR coming out next month. So I just, I write whatever I want to write because that's who I'm writing for. I, I'm writing for the type of person that I am and hopefully there's enough weirdos out there that'll want to hop around the genres with me so well I love that you mentioned the the PNR um the which I had to look that up I, I guess that's paranormal um yep. so I haven't I haven't actually gotten to your paranormal fiction yet um or like I said I'm I'm, I'm kind of at the beginning of of your um your link tree which sure. I'll, I'll I'll put your link tree in the in the show notes and the Excellent. for YouTube in the description so everybody can tap into that. Um, yeah, middle grade supernatural. Um, so just I guess like with the character in Touch Me See Me, like I don't know, is it is it kind of the same the same kind of thing where you you have someone who's kind of powerless and they kind of have to find their they find their um they learn to kind of use their superpower as it is yeah you know what I really just I, I wanted to have a main character that um for all intents and purposes just had something wrong with her because I feel like so many um you know and I say wrong with her um because so many people so many characters and books are seemingly so perfect um you know they're they're always good looking they're always thin they're always um not always but they they generally tend to be like um 
extremes in culture, I guess, you know, there's, there's either something really significant about them or they're extremely boring and blase. And then they have this Phoenix rising event in the book and they come into their own. Well, I kind of wanted to have a character that was quirky and different. And it's so hard to be original in this world as I'm sure, you know, um, having read as many books as you have. Um, and I just, I didn't know of a, of a mute character, a mute main character and, and to have her kind of become that Phoenix and rise out of that ash and throughout throughout a story that weaves in the paranormal, I thought would be something that people would want to see or in my stupid brain going, that's a movie people would want to watch because that's really how I write. I go, yeah, is this a movie people would want to watch, you know? Um, Cause a lot of my news comes from, you know, television shows and movies, so. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I, I relate to that character quite a, uh, quite a lot. And I love how <coughs> she has this voice box that she doesn't even, it's kind of in her purse and she doesn't yeah. use it because I don't ever want to talk to people, you know? <laughs> I mean, they're, right. they're so mean, they're so shallow, you know? Right. And then, and then there's the one person who, who actually does see her and, and, and want to hear her. And then slowly she kind of, as she gets that confidence, even the ghosts and more people start actually paying attention to her and so she it's becomes perfect. seen and yeah. heard so yeah. yeah hence the title right like so she goes from being without giving anything away very invis invisible in her world to being all of those things in That's the title <laughs> absolutely. it's a very powerful thing for young adults who are going through that and then and then for people who are kind of reading it for, you know, with a nostalgic, you know, it, it, it from a more nostalgic, I guess, perspective, because it, it's like, oh, gosh, I remember when I felt that, you know, I didn't know where I belonged. I didn't sure. know. Where I it could be very cathartic. Yeah, a lot of us feel like we didn't have a voice in school, even when we did, so it was a way to kind of like put that into a character, I guess. And I think I did that subconsciously, really. You know, I, I didn't think about the fact that so many teens don't feel like they have a voice, but I think that that came out as I was writing, that feeling of uh, solidarity with young people that, um, you know, you don't know when you're going to be heard, you know, you don't know when it's your time to shine, really. So hopefully that comes through and that, and that somebody gets something from that. So you have quite a presence on TikTok. <laughs> if you love using TikTok, I can see. <laughs> it's just such a fun way to connect with my readers. Oh, okay. Absolutely. That's great. Um, now, what was, I don't know, I, how, when did you get into writing? Have you been doing this your whole life? Or? So, I mean, I, I've been a writer as, as soon as I put pencil to paper, I guess, but um, I didn't really take it seriously um, until COVID. I, um, I was own, I owned a winery um, in the Finger Lakes of New York, and um, a lot of things happened, and then COVID happened, and I realized, you know, it wasn't really what I wanted to do anymore, um, and I had some some space to fill um, in my creative side, so I started making jewelry, like silversmithing, and um, really loved that for a while, um, and then I I said to myself, I actually I looked at a goal board I made like when I was 28 and publish, publish a book was on my goal board because I'm a visual person, right? And um, I said, you know what, if I'm not going to do it during COVID on lockdown, then I probably never will. And so I just sat down and I spit out Mitzi Clark and the um, Keepers of Shut after uh, watching my favorite show at the time, Supernatural. I, I thought I was laying in bed and I thought, huh, I wonder if, you know, Dean Winchester had a daughter like how would she find out what her parents did for a living and and it kind of just kind of spiraled from there into the Mitzi Clark series and then I was bit by the the writing bug I was hooked it was instantly my baby I knew that that this was what I was meant to do so interesting so you got it okay so the middle grade supernatural kind of came first yes and then I decided I needed some big girl panties and that's when uh searching for Sadie happened um and there's a lot about my own life kind of interweaved in there just little little tidbits of the inner machinations of my mind <laughs> so 
how did, how did you get into Kendall Vela? And do you, do you like doing Kendall Vela? Is that kind of more of a transition? Or? You know, so Kendall Vela is a funny thing for me. It has the most brilliant online community of writers I've ever come across. I mean, everybody is so helpful and supportive in the Kindle Vela Facebook community. I, I had no idea until I, I just, I stumbled upon a YouTube video where a woman said, you know, I could make that she makes 400 or $500 a month on Kindle Vela. And I said, well, I don't really make that much as a writer. So let me take a look. And, and I just decided to, uh, to start writing a little of this and a little of that. And I started playing online games to get a readership going. And all of a sudden I was making more money as a writer than I had with four previously published books. And I said, well, why don't I just use Kindle Vela as I'm writing my books? Um, so kind of consider the Vela as the first draft. And that's kind of what I've been doing. So it, it basically allows me to make a little bit of money every month to write my first draft. So it's, I'm being paid to write the books I'm going to publish anyway. And then even once the books are published, they can stay on Kindle Vela and continue to make money from the Vela community, which is a really nice feature of the Vela platform. And then um, I move forward and I have the book that I set off, that I, that I was going for when I set off. So it's, uh, it's a really nice platform. That's a great idea. And that's a great way to look at Kendall Vela. Um, you know, I, I have, I have one story on there that I'm kind of, I just kind of plug away at it little by little. And it is kind of just, it's like a, a great exercise. Um, it kind of exercise, it, it kind of gets, it gets it flowing, it gets it out. And then like yeah. you said, the first draft, and then you just kind of tweak it and perfect it. And then you put it out as an ebook, paperback, Sure. And that's, that's kind of what happened with uh, Little Hell on the Prairie. Um, I grew up watching Little House on the Prairie, like a lot of kids born in the, you know, we'll say 70s and 80s. And um, it was one of my favorite shows growing up. And one day I was watching it and I thought to myself, well, what if their first month on the prairies, dogmen or werewolves show up? And Little Hell on the Prairie was born and it's just a 21 episode Vela. But um, everybody kept telling me I needed to put it in ebook and paperback form so I went ahead and did that and now everybody's begging me for a sequel so what I'm going to do is make this a prequel and so the the main real book will be out probably in a year or so I don't know I have so many things I'm working on it's ridiculous <laughs> what a great title um what let's let's see it again little little hell on the prairie and the, the thing that's fun about this is I don't use names. Like it's not, uh, I'm not stealing the story. It's, mm -hmm. it's not Laura and, um, you know, it's not Charles. It's, um, it's me, it's first person, you know, and sister, Ma and Pa. And there are no names at all used in the book. So it kind of sets it up to, to let the reader's imagination do what it will. But uh, the tagline is a little fun though. It's, there will be blood, at least a half pint or so. Oh, that's great. I love yeah, that. that. That was really fun to write. I wrote this in like maybe four weeks. So it was just wow. just a little pet project on the side that I just, my husband loves and he's not yeah. a big reader. So I said, I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah, I, I love that. And also the inspiration because you mentioned the, the show Supernatural, which that's was my favorite awesome. show. Yeah. And then um, Audrey and Maude kind of a league of their own but oh I'm so excited that you said that yeah, was, anyway, go ahead. yeah so while I'm writing Audrey and Maude I am totally picturing Gina Davis and Kit right like I mean you can't really see it but behind me on the wall, oh. I have a I have an inspiration board for Audrey and Maude and in that inspiration board let's see if I can steal it oh no, it'll rip. But on the very top corner is um, Gina Davis, and she's in her League of Their Own yeah. outfit. Now, that's not the only picture, or that's not the only movie that this book is kind of like mused from. It's also a little bit of For the Boys with Bette Midler yeah. um, because of her music career during World War II, which is a big portion of the story. And it's also a little bit letters to Juliet because of the journey that Heather goes on, the granddaughter. So what I've done is I've merged these three amazing movies 
into my own version of this story that feels very a league of their own meets for the boys meets letters to Julia. Well, that's what I'm going for anyway. So I'm so happy that you picked up on the a league of their own. Yeah. I had to take a break from it because it was, it was so heavy on my heart. Like, cause I really, when I'm writing, I just really fall into these characters and I, I had to, I had to take a break. So um, I'm coming back to that as soon as this PNR comes out. Um, I just had to like take this because I, I didn't want to do it justice. And I felt I was at a point where I was just writing it to, to get words on the page. And that's not what this, this story is special to me, Audrey and Maude. So I really want to give it the full attention it deserves. Yeah. Um, so what's the <coughs> Sorry. PNR story that you're coming out with? Um, it's called As the Tide Turns. It's part of the a Monster Brides romance series. Um, I was approached by a friend and fellow author. Um, and every month, two different PNR wedding related Monster Bride stories are coming out. Um, they're all $2.99 in ebook form. And I chose a mermaid. Um, and so my story is about a mermaid named Marisol, who. Um, Basically, I, I attack this kind of different because, you know, I'm a genre hopper, but uh, her, her mother basically presents her with like a rumspringa situation where she had no idea that her mother grew up as a mermaid and she has to go and live her season underwater with this family that she's never met. And so it's, it's about her six weeks in the sea um, to discover mermaid life and what happens to her. Uh, while she's there changes the the course of her future on land so it's fun it's a little spooky it's romantic without being too spicy I'm it's like a two out of five spice uh, right around 50,000 words wow okay so Hopefully. fingers crossed it's not done yet <laughs> not done yet um okay so awards I saw what what awards have you won well um let's say um Searching for Sadie won the book fest. It won a, I think it was a bronze in the book fest. And then Mitzi Clark and the Keepers of Shut, the first book I don't have any physical copies on hand. That won an international book award uh, finalist. So they were the only two I submitted for and I was happy to get something on both of them. That's great. You submitted... <clears throat> um, what what was the contest or um the international book awards happens once a year um and you're basically it's it's a scored process so you're you're really adjudicated individually not against the other books so i met the criteria to be considered a finalist which is kind of like an a minus i guess but i'll take it and then the um the book fest award is is also i think graded similarly where um, five or six different judges will will read your stories and they provide you with feedback. And then your your award is based on your, your scoring system. So I was, like I said, I was just honored that my scores were high enough to get my little stickers and say, I won something. <laughs> Absolutely. So searching for Sadie, um, the paperback, and it's an ebook too, of course. Yes, yeah. it's, it's actually my only book that's an audio book also on audible so if you have any audible credits you can go snag searching for sadie <laughs> absolutely yeah i do and you read you read you read that for you read the audio book or i didn't i actually i found a very very talented um artist that did the read the reading for me the recording for me she's really good her name is um ariel jo joria i hope i said that right she'll forgive me if i didn't um <laughs> But she was a uh, out of the forty-seven interviews and auditions that I did. She she was like the first one I listened to, and and she's just so natural. She's brilliant, and she did an amazing job on the audio book. So that's 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 really cool. So there's an audio book. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'll have to put the link to that as well in the show notes. Um. Awesome. So future. My Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say that the thing I'm probably struggling most um, right now with like marketing and such is I don't think you really realize how much marketing goes into indie published books until you've published one. But the Mitzi Clark series for me has been probably the, the biggest obstacle to overcome because it's written for middle grade. Um, 
but you don't market to middle grade, right? You, you market to parents and it's frustrating because I know it has the bones to be a smashing hit. And I'm not saying that to sound conceited. I just really um, believe in what I put out there. And it seems to be really loved by the people that have picked it up and read it. But I'm just having such a hard time getting the news of the series out there because it's such a, a niche market being middle grade supernatural. So any love that anybody wants to show Mitzi Clark, the Mitzi Clark series would be fantastic because the final book will be out for Christmas. And I hope that that, um, I hope the whole series really catches fire soon because I, I really think it has a lot of, a lot of quality to it. So hopefully other people will discover it and judge yeah. it for themselves and uh so you found, have you found that that it's like adults who have found it really enjoy it but you're trying to kind of get through yeah, it's it's <laughs> tricky because i you know i really i wrote like this is book three and it's my favorite um it's the secrets of stash and the main characters go off to training camp where they learn how to be hunters of supernatural creatures and it's very Goosebumps meets Nancy Drew meets Harry Potter. Um, but the people that are on Facebook and the people that are on um, Amazon looking for books are, you know, if they stumble upon it, they read it. And some of the reviews are like, I didn't know it was middle grade when I bought it, but I was pleasantly surprised because it was really fun and a page turner and I really loved it and I blah, blah, blah. But I'm not. And I do have some feedback from parents like, oh, my 10 year old could not put this book down. And it's so, so rewarding to see those kind of reviews because these are great for re reluctant readers. But how do you get kids interested in a book series without, you know, multi million dollar advertising campaigns where they're on YouTube commercials all the time or celebrities buzzing about them? It's quite a difficult task to. Uh, to convince parents to give this book series a try from an author they know nothing about. So I'd be happy to get any feedback or tips or tricks from your audience if they have any suggestions of marketing for me. I'm all ears. I'm a learning, I'm a sponge of any information anybody wants to share with me, so. Sure. Yeah, that's really interesting how, you know, <clears throat> get through the gatekeeper parents, you know. Sure. Um, and just, just. How just do, seeing it, knowing it's there is, is the trick. Like just like, getting it in front of the, the right faces is very difficult in a sea of millions and millions of excellent books, quite frankly. Right. Yeah, I've heard that the the middle grade is a particularly challenging uh age group to try yeah. to get used to. Um funnily enough, I think I think um almost every celebrity out there has decided to write a kid's book, like really little. Yes. Like middle grade is kind of a challenging. It's interesting. I think a lot of middle grade books kind of, for lack of a better phrase, are written, they're, they're kind of like dumbing it down, thinking that the readers are just not emotionally mature enough to handle like, I don't know what they handle every day in middle school. And so I try to avoid doing that in Mitzi Clark. I try to keep it real without um, without crossing any lines. And um, I think that's why people enjoy it. So hopefully it hopefully it will be seen. And you know, that's the, that's all we can do. But again, with the genre hopping, right? Because, yeah. you know, why is somebody that reads Searching for Sadie or um, Touch Me, See Me, Feel Me, Hear Me or Little Hell on the Prairie? Why are they going to pick up a middle grade supernatural series? Well, I do think that... Um... I haven't read the Mitzi Clark stuff, but just going off of the the YA supernatural, touch me, see me, feel me, hear me, um, and Audrey and Maude to some extent, but I think I can hear that tone, and I, don't, I hope you don't take it the wrong way, not to make a comparison, but um, it is a little similar in tone to like Meg Cabot's stuff. Because it has that the the protagonist is very, has a very strong voice, like even in Touch Me, where she doesn't have a voice, but but you connect with her, you know, and so you can hear her. You get that strong, the strong um, feelings, um, just by the way that it's written, and I, I just feel like Meg Cabot really does that successfully, um, like 
you know, the, the Princess Diaries series and yeah. I think she has some other kind of, they actually, she has a mediator series too, which is kind of gets into the supernatural stuff as well. And it, it, it it's that, it's that kind of, you know, not the popular girl, not the, yeah. the you know, she's a, she's a little, um, a little, uh, uh, she has something from, I guess, from the eyes of the world, something wrong with her. Sure. <laughs> but don't we all? Yeah. yeah. I think that's, that's what I love about writing is like, we really just all have our own little sparks and even, yeah. even the people that look so perfect and put together and all the celebrities, they all, they all think they're crazy. They yeah. all think they're nuts. They all think there's something wrong with them. And uh, nobody is nobody is absolved or immune from that. So that, that's a, a wonderful part of being a writer is, is I can pick whichever flaws and strengths I want for my characters and it keeps things fun. <laughs> what a great tone to kind of to kind of end on, but let's see your books one more time. Let's hold them sure. up one by one. I only have the last of the Mitzi Clark series on hand, but this is book three of the Mitzi Clark series. Okay. I'm searching for Sadie. I love this cover. I think Sinisa, um, Sinisa, I'm going to butcher his last name, so I'm not going to go there. He did a fantastic job, but it, it has a nice wrapped cover, um, beautiful Alaska landscape. Little Hell on the Prairie, my little novel. I give a lot of these away free to my TikTok followers just because um, I think it's a, it's a great way to build community. So if you're not following me on TikTok, go to it. And then, uh, of course, the much beloved recent Touch me, see me, feel me, hear me. My baby. I love this book. I also like doing this because it makes me look funny. And uh, coming out very, very soon, um, As the Tide Turns, A Monster Bride's Romance. So all right. thank you. Thank you so, so much for having me. I had a blast. This is a lot of fun. Yes, it was. Thank you for talking to me. All right. Take care. Have a good day. You too.